Hello and welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to learn how to handle exceptions which we had in the previous lecture. So in the previous lecture we have already learned about the divide by zero exception in which when you divide a certain number by zero you are going to get an exception. So now let's learn how to handle exceptions so that our program does not crash in the manner which it did in the previous lecture. So the very first thing in exception handling is that we need to have something which allows us to try a set of code to check if that code actually results in some exception. So let's say you have a few line of code and you think that this particular code is going to cause an exception. So in that case what we do is that we use something which is called as a try statement or a try block. So what you simply do in order to avoid exceptions is you type in try give a colon and whatever code you are actually going to write in try is going to be considered to be present in the try block. So this is the try block right here and you write the exception prone code inside this try block. So if you think that this line of code is actually going to generate an exception so in that case we specify that code over here. So now let's go ahead and perform the exact division operation which we have performed in the previous lecture. So let's define two variables. So let's say a is equal to 20 and let's say b is equal to 0. So let's assume that we want to divide a by b. So we are going to intentionally cause a divide by 0 exception and then we are going to learn how to actually handle it. So let me just divide these two numbers. So I'm going to simply type in print a divided by b and now what you need to do here is that in order to handle that exception you need to have something which is called as an accept block. So similar to try block you need to have the accept block. So you simply type in accept and after this you mention the type of error which you want to handle. Now as you are doubtful that this is actually going to cause a divide by zero error hence we are going to actually use the exception zero division error. So we simply type in zero division error give a colon and in the accept block we are going to write in the code which we want to execute when the exception occurs. So whenever the exception occurs what we want to do is that we want to print out to the user that there is a divide by zero error. So here we simply type in print in quotation let's type in there is a divide by zero error. So now let's go ahead and see how this code is going to work. So right now we have two blocks in our code the try block and the accept block. So essentially the try block is going to contain the code which we are going to try out and it is going to check if this code actually contains an exception. So if we get an exception here we have specified the zero division error in the accept block which is going to execute this code in case the exception occurs. So now in order to check if this thing performs correctly let's go ahead and save the code and let's try to run it. So as you could see we got the result as there is a divide by zero error as the output and this time as you might notice that our program didn't crash because we have handled the exception correctly. Now what if we actually divide a number by a non-zero value. So in that case if we save the code and if you run it as you could see you get the result which is 20 divided by 10 which is 2.0 and you are not going to get this line of code because the exception is not actually raised by our code that means the code which was written inside the try block actually got successfully executed and there was no exception. So the exception is only going to be raised if you actually try to divide any number by 0 so again if you replace this by 0 and if you run the code as you could see you will get the output as there is a divide by zero error. Now in your program what you actually want to do is that you want to tell the user to enter the non-zero value on the second variable. So you could also print out that message over here so that the user understands that he should not enter the zero value for the second variable. So that's it for this lecture and there is actually one more block apart from the try and accept which is called as the finally block in exception handling and we are going to learn that block in the next tutorial. So that's it for this lecture and I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you.